oftentimes we confuse feelings of guilt with feelings of shame, with feelings of I'm bad, with I'm just a lousy, useless human being. And I'm going to cover some of those things in this video. I'm going to separate guilt and shame from each other. And I hopefully am going to give you some good insight into how these things impact you in your daily life, in your relationships and so on. And I'm also going to give you some insights and perhaps some practices that you can do to help you work with your shame and with your guilt. I'm, I'm doing this video mainly to follow up on the video I posted with Gabber Mate. And if you haven't seen that, I suggest you go and check it out. It's a great example of compassionate inquiry and how once we develop some clarity around what our guilt is saying to us and how it's impacting us, how potentially we can work through it and some of the things you can do to empower yourself. My name is Mike. I'm the founder of Starts With Me, and I am also a psychotherapist, and I am a mental health consultant in workplaces and in schools, and I am also someone who's lived through uh, a long past history of addiction and mental illness, and also as a caregiver to family member who is living with schizophrenia. So I hope that this is helpful for you and let's get into it. So what is shame? Shame is the fundamental belief that we are unlovable, that we are unworthy, and that really there's just something wrong with us and who we are. Thus, when we interact with the world and we have difficult moments that don't go our way, our shame response or our way of, of identifying with ourselves in relationship to experience triggers this deep sense of shame and discomfort and kind of wanting to hide from the world. The, the reason that shame is so difficult to deal with is because there's a fundamental belief that we will not have our needs met and that we will really be alone because of what we're shameful for. Shame has three fundamental paradoxes. Shame can feel blameworthy, but is also an innocent emotion. Shame feels lonely and isolating and is also a universal emotion. Shame feels permanent and all-encompassing. And it is only just an experience or an expression or a feeling of who we are in certain moments of our life. I think it can be helpful to distinguish between guilt and shame. So shame is, the again, as mentioned, the fundamental belief that there is something inherently wrong with me, that I am not a good person. Guilt, on the other hand, is a sense that I did something bad, so I feel guilty about the specific act that I did or the way that I treated somebody or the way that I acted. So shame is more a, a, a overarching belief that I am bad. Guilt is specifically in reference to a specific experience or a specific behavior. Guilt can be a productive behavior because it can motivate us to repair situations or things that we did that we know were wrong and that we also want to repair. On the other hand, shame is inherently unproductive because it renders us almost it's almost as if we freeze or we isolate and we ruminate about our way or who we are and if we feel so bad about ourselves that we typically don't engage in behaviors to help alleviate that shame and so what i want to share with you in this video is how can you work with shame and also guilt in a compassionate way a self-compassionate way so that you can transcend or at least you can start to let go of the often paralyzing sensations of shame because they really are so horrible and so detrimental to our overall well-being that if we can learn to work with shame and guilt then our hearts open up the world opens up and our relationships our ability to act in the world in a way that we would want to becomes much more possible and much more actually likely 
to happen. Shame is often triggered by what are called negative core beliefs. They often get implanted in our minds from childhood, but also as adults. And negative core beliefs are common across all human beings. So you can rest assured if you're feeling bad about yourself or believing that you're defective, unlovable, that you're a loser, that nothing is ever going to work out for you, that you can't trust other people, that the world is out to get you. Those are all examples of negative core beliefs. And don't worry because everybody experiences them. So if you are in the grip of a negative core belief, you might start to practice reminding yourself that that is normal. It's the common human experience to suffer in this way and that you have agency over this, that you can do things and change the way that this sense or these negative core beliefs impact you. And I'm going to share with you right now some of those things. Okay, the first thing that we want to do when we are experiencing shame is to just label the fact that you're feeling this way. Often in psychology, some of the slang or the pop words uh, is name it to tame it. So I simply just want to say, I am feeling shame right now. I am feeling bad. I am feeling angry. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling embarrassed. So I want to name the emotion that I'm feeling. Number two, I want to remind myself that feelings of shame and feeling bad about myself is the common human experience. Suffering is the common human experience. And we often forget that and we start to think there's something wrong with us when we are suffering. Okay, so number one, name it to tame it. Name your emotion. This also has a physiological response on how you feel. I feel bad. I'm honoring the suffering. I'm reminding myself that I'm not inherently flawed for being feeling this way or being inadequate, whatever it is. And now the third piece is this idea of self-kindness. Or can I relate to this suffering in a way that's kind, encouraging, and helpful as opposed to self-critical? Because we often tend to be very critical of ourselves when we're suffering, which just compounds the problem and makes matters worse. I don't know about you, but I tend to be quite self-critical. So how do we work with these self-critical experiences so we can reduce our feelings of shame? and increase our feelings of self-compassion and agency. So to reiterate that, number one, name it to tame it. Some sense you could call this a sense of mindfulness. I'm mindful of these thoughts and feelings of shame. I feel bad, I feel shame, I feel embarrassed. I can remind myself, number two, that of our, my common humanity, or this is the common human experience. It's okay to suffer. There's nothing inherently wrong with me because I feel bad. And number three, rather than being so self-critical, can I speak to myself in a way that is more kind and encouraging? So that might look like something like this. Oh, I'm noticing that I'm feeling embarrassed or shameful about how I spoke to my partner today. Oh, and I can remind myself that it's okay to feel shame and to feel embarrassed, part of the human experience to feel this way. And rather than beating myself up about this and telling myself how much of a loser and how much of a failure I am, I can tell myself that, okay, it's okay that you did this. Mistakes happen. They're part of life and I'm going to be okay. And I can actually either make amends for the bad behavior, or I can start practicing different skills and habits in my life to reduce the likelihood of feeling this shame again in the future. So this is a, a little, a short video, and, and I think it provides you some insight into the difference between shame and guilt, provides you a couple of ways of starting to notice and to name, to tame your difficult emotions and to start to speak to yourself in a way that's going to promote your well-being as opposed to continually criticizing yourself. I hope it was helpful for you. I wish you all the best. Please like, comment, subscribe to this channel. I would love that. 
And if you have any questions, type them in the comment section or simply go to startswithme.ca and submit a contact form and ask me a question. It might go to myself or one of our team members, but we want to be of service to you. We want to help you live your best life. And that's about it. Thank you very much. Peace.